Carlo Arbath is a performance icon to people like you and I. Not because he set up his own racing team, not because he eventually made his own road cars, but because he then started tinkering with every man models that you and I could go and buy. All of a sudden, Italian models had a bit more punch and the Scorpion gave them a real sting in their tail. This is the Abarth 595 SASA, a model that makes a return to the Abarth range to celebrate 70 years of that Scorpion on the bonnet. I think it's safe to say that Abarth's most famous models stem from the Fiat 500, even going back decades. The unassuming little city car that potted locals through the packed streets of Turin became a superstar overnight when Carlo Arbath decided to take them racing, donning the 595 mantra. 595s have long since been a staple of the Abarth range and this SASA that celebrates seven decades of the brand has got a few extra special trinkets. By and large the oily bits of this Arbath hadn't changed all that much versus say a Competizione model. And that means you get a heavily turbocharged 1.4 litre engine that produces 178 brake horsepower and 184 pounds feet of torque. Now considering that this thing's the size of a shoebox and weighs just over a tonne, that's pretty punchy performance. Zero to 62 miles per hour takes 6.7 seconds and a top speed of 140 miles an hour is said to be achievable. Two of the most relevant toys that this SASA model gets is the BMC filter under the bonnet and that new Akrapovich exhaust at the back, which just sounds incredible. it burbles at idle and it leaves people rather bemused at a car the size of a Fiat 500 making quite so much racket but it's part of this car's absolutely endearing and intoxicating character it's like an excitable border terrier taking on a bulldog it's maybe pint-sized but it lacks no enthusiasm whatsoever and it, it really adds to the theatre of generally driving the car Something else that does make a difference when driving is the limited slip differential found between the two front wheels and this helps eliminate some of the understeer. Now there is some, and especially if you drive enthusiastically in wet weather, its tyres do tend to scrabble for grip and the car will push wide, but it's all quite predictable and you can sort of tailor it with the throttle, you can trim the car in to a corner accordingly. Charge through this five-speed manual gearbox in sport mode with the turbo cage dancing around enthusiastically on the dashboard and there is plenty of fun to be had. The short wheelbase, the keen 305mm Brembo brakes that bite nice and hard means that you can shift all the weight around in the car and the short wheelbase of the car means that it changes direction really quickly, it's an agile little thing. It positively leaps from bend to bend and if you get the trajectory just right on a crest that falls away from you there's this lovely feeling of the car just sliding over the apex and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really endearing thing to drive quickly. You've got to be on your toes because like I said, the short wheelbase nature of the car means it does like to fidget about a bit, but keep on top of it and allow the car to work with you and for you to work the car. And yeah, I can't help but say, people who enjoy driving or enjoy a bit of a challenge when driving quickly, this thing will definitely put a grin on your face. Now, there are some shortcomings. If I'm totally honest, if we're speaking objectively, there are things wrong with this car. And they're sort of inherent from the 500 of which it's based on, and also, you know, just things that maybe a bath could have done a little bit better. So as I've already said, the steering is nice and precise. It's very accurate to place the car right on the apex of a bend, but it does lack some feel and feedback, which is, it sort of detaches you from the experience a little. Also, this gearbox maybe is not the shortest throw. The ergonomics of the, of the cabin in general aren't great. The pedals are quite offset. These wonderful Sabelt body-hugging seats are fantastic, but they're placed too high up in the car and you sort of feel like you're sat on top of all of the controls, which is a bit of a shame. I'd like to feel a little lower, a little more plugged into the chassis. The touchscreen infotainment system, while the software is good and a big improvement over previous Arbaths that I've driven and the larger screen as well in later models, um, 
yeah, it's fine. And especially when you use Apple CarPlay, it's you know fully compatible with the latest smartphones. Fantastic. But I've had this system reboot on me three times in a row yesterday, and it just started to get a little bit annoying in a car that costs just over £25,000. Yes, 25k for this little car. But for your money, you do also get other features like the red stitching on these seats. The seats themselves are actually carbon shelled. There's carbon on the dashboard. Everything that you see on the car that is carbon fibre is real carbon. Now, when you take a step back and factor in competitors and how much this thing costs, a Mini Cooper S maybe makes a lot more sense. But I have to say, I have a far bigger smile on my face in this. <laughs> But this little thing just puts me in such a good mood when I drive it. I can imagine after a hard, stinking day at the office where the boss has been in your ear, the photocopier isn't working properly, and God, you know, you're wait waiting on an email reply for days on end, and you get in the car quite frustrated, and you take the country route home in the 595 SASA. I think you'd be in a pretty good mood by the time you get to your front door. So in short, this is a car that you very much buy with your heart and not your head. How very Italian.